opposite of necessity. So, coincidence is that which need not be. It's that which could have been different. This is a, that which must be, that which nothing different can be. Okay. Uh, this is this is what is this is what is considered modal analysis, but it, it, these are the very, the most basic concepts in regards to modal analysis. And if you'd like, you can have, take a closer picture of this being uh, if it wasn't clear. Good, thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Okay, and uh, also what I've done uh, in regards to this, I have some definitions here. You might want to take a picture of this as well. Um, you guys know in, in Texas, uh, it's, it's funny, if you go to a place and you're ordering a hamburger, you have somebody come out and say, hey, would you like mayonnaise or mustard on that? Logically, you can answer yes, which is it's a funny answer to have, you know, if, if somebody asks you, would you like mayonnaise or mustard? Yes. Mm -hmm. But uh, it's because they're using a different type of war. So they're using what's called an exclusive or. <clears throat> it's this or this, but not both. Okay? And that's what this, uh, this symbol is right here. This is or. Yeah. Or it's also written as X or. You can write X O R. And that stands for the same thing. So what I've, what I've done is I've, I've taken these different concepts. So that, uh, here there are a couple different concepts of uh, possibility. Um, so we have logical possibility, and uh, this is why you guys need to study logic, okay? Because this sentence right here is the same thing as this right here. So you guys can tell that it's a lot more concise, right? It's just that you use a few symbols, and you're able to represent quite a bit of material, okay? But I, also, I think you guys know basically what uh, these things mean. You guys know what, what logically possible means, what physically possible means, physically impossible, and logically impossible. Okay. Do you guys have a question on that? Yeah, go ahead and take a picture of this. Okay. And also what I've done uh, is I've come up with the different uh, logical relations of these different modes right here. If, if, you, if you take a look at what we're saying, right? So anything that we talk about is gonna involve this. So every sentence that we say and so forth is going to involve this. Um, when, when, you, when you talk about some fact, right? Whether, uh, whether it's true that um, a certain group of people are overrepresented in the prison system uh, that's either real or it's unreal, right? So, uh, and these, these concepts right here uh, are referring to basically every single way um, that we can look at the meanings of sentences. So they're important in this way. We have weak relations and strong relations. So if, if something is uh, coincidental, then it needs to be logically possible if it's if it's real and coincidental, okay? But it, it need not be. Uh, uh, if something is logically possible, it's it's not necessarily coincidental. That's just what that means. Another concept, and I've, I've taken I've taken these different um, these different ways that you can represent the modes and everything. You can represent them in terms of sizes as well in relation to one another. So that reality becomes a concept that is actually pretty small. Pretty small in comparison to the other concepts. So the, the biggest concept in, in regards to the modes is actually unreality. Because that's gonna involve everything that's logically impossible, physically impossible, and uh, a lot of people consider you know, coincidence. Coincidence is, is a bit of both. There are coincidental realities and coincidental unrealities. Okay? So perhaps it's a coincidental reality that we are all here right now. Because it's not necessary. Right? Okay. But
but but these are these are it's a rough depiction of, of how the modes are. So I'm going to show you guys just how we use these. So here's here's my example that involves uh, some of the philosophy law. So consider this: there's a car accident, and there's a death involved in that. And the 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 spouse that is in the car accident that lives has charges as a as an indictment against him. Okay. So it's a, actually a car a car wreck between um, well two cars, and it's a married couple. The husband and the wife are in the two cars. The wife dies in the accident. The husband lives, and he's being accused of, you say, vehicular manslaughter. Yes? It's a big, it's a big important question. Uh, is the husband and the wife, are they in different vehicles? They're in different vehicles. Okay. Yeah. So this, this one, you say, this one is where the wife was, and this one was where the husband was. Okay? So take a look at this. Here's the evidence for the case that's being used, the most important aspects. The first, the wife is recently separated from her husband. Before the wreck, of course. The wife closed her shared bank account. You guys don't do that. Don't share your bank accounts. <laughs> she closed her shared bank account and transferred all the money to her own personal bank account. And the husband has already been reported twice for spousal abuse. So here's what the prosecution says. So first, the first piece of evidence, the wife wants a divorce, or she wanted the divorce, and the husband did not. Then he was motivated to kill her. Okay? Second one, the wife wanted to take full financial control. The husband trusted his shared bank account with her, and he was motivated to kill her when she took everything from the bank account. And lastly, the prosecutor... The, the, uh, the lawyer for the state says the husband was completely irrational. He's, he, he likes to beat his wife and so forth. And it's not even surprising that he killed her. So this is what the defense argues. In a perfect world, here's what the defense argues. The defense attorney either comes up with an argument that everything was coincidental in which case, it was unplanned, unforeseen. He had no idea that that wreck was going to happen, and, and so forth. And uh, also, it maybe maybe if he had if he had just been two inches to the right, then you know he would have died and she would have lived, right? And, and he had no control over that whatsoever. This is this is these are the type of arguments that the defense is going to use, basically. If you are arguing and people are successfully convinced that it was a coincidence, then the person can't be held morally or legally blameworthy. Okay. So here are some of the meanings that we have for coincidence. A coincidence, uh, they're, they're equivocated quite often. They're, they're, sometimes people mistake uh, one of the meanings for the other. A coincidence is uh, also defined as being unplanned, involuntary, unexpected, it's unforeseen, accidental, impartial. It was lucky for the man to survive and bad luck uh, for him because he's a widower. And of course it's bad luck for the woman because she died in the crash. These are all used by the defense. okay? <coughs> and uh, they amount to different meanings of coincidence. But basically, that's what the defense attorney is arguing. His argument is all coincidental. So the conclusion, when the judges or jurors are convinced that the relevant events are all coincidental, their decisions maintain that the accused is not guilty. And the legal and moral guilt is relinquished in this case. Here's my question now. Question for you guys. What if what if he argues that everything was necessary, that it had to happen? Right, this is the opposite meaning of coincidence. It's the same thing. It's the same thing because that means if it was necessary, he couldn't have done anything differently than what happened. So also, he can't.
can't be held legally or morally blameworthy. This is a major problem in philosophy. Um, it, it's a major problem that, that occurs within courts of law because basically what the lawyers are doing is they're arguing, all right, we're going to take a look at all the evidence, and then we're going to argue this is all coincidental. Okay? And in another case, they argue, all right, we're going to argue that everything was absolutely necessary. And in both instances, right, if, if it was coincidental, it was unplanned, unforeseen, and involuntary. So the person can't be held morally or legally blameworthy. In the other case, where it's all argued that it's necessary, I say, what? Well, nothing could have happened differently than it did. Nothing. So that person can't be held legally responsible or morally responsible for it. So th this is a major problem. So there's, there's a problem in regards to evaluating actions and the things that people do as being necessary or coincidental.